When you're actually playing scales, there are two concerns that I'd like you to focus on. One is what you might call the lead finger. And that would essentially be the, the finger that's on the beat. So if I'm thinking four notes per beat and I start this scale in I, then I will be my lead finger. I want to visualize that finger as I go through the scale. So in other words, I'll go I, I, context of playing a scale in a piece, that's critically important. You must know that lead finger. Secondly, you must practice string crossings. If your index finger is on the lower string and your middle finger is on the upper string, that's what we call a good string crossing. If M is on the second string and I is on the first string, that's a bad string crossing. All scales are going to have both kinds of string crossings. When you play this C major scale, if I start on I, I will have a bad string crossing. Good, good, bad, bad, good, good, bad. In certain pieces, such as the Villa Lobos Etude Number no. 7, you can actually finger the left hand scales in such a way that it makes all the right hand string crossings the same. So if I play that, I'll have, if I start on I, I'll have bad, good, good, bad, good. Starting on I. and so on. That can be very helpful because, in a sense, you only have to w learn one scale with the right hand in that piece. In a similar fashion, if you ever have the opportunity to work on the uh, Aranjuez Concerto by Rodrigo, the first movement is full of scales that you can play with a similar right hand string crossing pattern. Next, I like to focus on what I call defining your stroke. In other words, when you're alternating two fingers, you want to be completely aware of the movement that your fingers make. You want to be in control of the upwards as well as the downwards move movement of each finger. And ideally, you want the same for both fingers. So in other words, if I play I am rest stroke, I want to make sure that the lift of my finger is to the same height with each finger. What's sometimes the case is that you'll see somebody with a very high lift with their index finger and then a very low lift with M. That's frequently because of these fingers. If your A finger and your pinky are pulled in like this, that means that your flexor muscles are constantly flexed. And that's pulling your M finger into the palm of your hand, which means it's going to have a difficult time lifting. And so people tend to compensate by lifting their eye finger. So that's not a good situation. It's extremely important that your A finger move freely with your M finger. That especially is important on the lifting of your fingers. So for rest stroke, I want you to focus on having two things happen. One is that both fingers move at the same time. So you switch, 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 switch. You don't want a secondary movement like this where I go I finger, then I lift my M. So you don't want that staggered lift. You want your fingers to lift like a, or move like a seesaw where they move exactly at the same time. Switch, switch, switch. Secondly, when you play free stroke, I want the movement in front of the string to be equal for both I and M. As well, I want the movement behind the string to be equal. So you can watch your fingers like this and make sure that they go back to the same point as you play. If you can do that, you'll most likely have very good control of your right hand alternation and your scales will be nice and even. One thing that you can do with scales that is extremely helpful is to play with a very light staccato. Frequently, I like to have my students warm up with this idea a chromatic scale on a first string, playing slowly, but with quick movements. And 
so on. By doing that, if you keep the upper arm muscles nice and relaxed, you'll get a very precise motion with your right hand alternation. Finally, I'd like to suggest that you practice different articulations with your scales. One of the best ways of doing this is with a chromatic scale, say on the first string. What you might want to do is practice a very light staccato in this fashion. And so on. And then very deliberately play as legato as possible. Then try in between. And so on. I'd like to thank GSI for sponsoring this video. And if you have questions that I can answer, please ask, and I will be happy to answer them on this website. If there are enough questions that warrant another video, I'd be happy to produce a follow-up video in the near future. Good luck and best wishes.